Kedorithia Mass for Mrs. Sophia tomorrow. And this here in Texas, here in Dallas. The epistle for the Mass of the Day of Death, death Requiem Mass taken in St. Paul, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Brethren, we will not have you ignorant concerning them that are asleep, that you be not sorrowful, even as others who have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them who have slept through Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you in the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who remain unto the coming of the Lord, shall not prevent them who have slept. The Lord himself shall come down from heaven with commandment, and with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead who are in Christ shall rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be taken up together with them into the clouds, to meet Christ in the air, and so shall we be always with the Lord. Wherefore, cover ye one another with these words. In the Gospel, take that according to St. John, chapter 11. At that time, Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother would not have died. But now also I know that whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And Jesus said to her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, although he be dead, shall live. And everyone that liveth and believeth in me shall not taste death forever. Believest thou this? She said to him, Yea, Lord, I have believed that thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God, who art come into this world. Thus are the words of today's holy God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Amen. St. Paul tells us it is given for all men to die. And after death, the judgment. And it is true that death came into this world because Adam decided to commit a sin. Adam decided to disobey God. Adam decided that his pride was more important than obedience to God. And therefore, he brought death into the world. And from him, death came into the world, and every man must die. But then the same Lord said, Meliores mors quam vita amara. The same Lord said these words in the book of Proverbs. Better is death than a bitter life. It is given for all men to die. And every one of us at this moment, we are now on a regular Mexican experience here with a Mexican funeral, so it starts an hour late. So she went to visit tomorrow, was late for her own funeral. <laughs> We have angry people at the, in the graveyard. We have angry people here. It's a normal Mexican funeral. So they're even late for their own funeral. But the fact is, it is given for all men to die. And after death, the judgment. The Mexican judgment comes a little bit later. But there will be a judgment. It's given for all men to die, and after death, a judgment. And this moment, we are all closer to our death. Bitter is death and a bitter life, as the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ also said, said the Holy Ghost in the Old Testament, the Lord Jesus Christ said, Fear not him who can kill your body. Don't fear him who can put you to death. But fear him that kills the soul. Death is not such a tragic thing. Why do we know this? Because God the Son left heaven. And as Bishop Sheen says, he could not come to this earth in order to live because he is life. He is life with God the Father in heaven. He's life with God the Holy Ghost. He is the origin and source of all life. He cannot become man to live. He only became man for one purpose, and that is to die. Therefore, death must not be such a terrible thing. 
If you see the picture of the Shroud of Turin, you look upon the Holy Shroud, you look at the face of our Lord Jesus Christ after he has been dead for three days. After being dead for three days. And there came a light upon his dead body. And he changed from death to life. But it was the last picture of him at his death. And if you look upon that face that you can see in the shroud, it is a most beautiful face. Christ in death. It was the face that he wanted to be impressed upon us. You know that when the shroud was discovered and shown publicly in the year 200, around the year between 200 and 300, artists began to look at that face of the dead Christ and they realized that he had a beard in a certain way. He wasn't clean shaven like the Romans. And they saw his face, the face of the dead Christ. And this is the face that is the pattern of every image of Christ that we have, the real body of Jesus Christ after three days in the tomb. It is the most beautiful face that can ever be gazed upon. And it is the face of one man who is dead three days. It must not be so bad to be dead. And our Lord Jesus Christ has said, Fear not death. One of the great tragedies of our time in the year 2020, they tell you about COVID-19, coronavirus-19. doesn't exist. Don't worry about that. What is it that is so terrible about it? It is going to bring us death. The machine says a kind of joke, but it's a true statement. When you go to the deathbed of a man, and he is now, Miss Sophia was 97 years old, she passed into eternity, 97 years old, body is about ready to go. Don't tell him he's going to die, say the doctors, because he might die. What if you don't tell him he's going to die? He's going to die. What if you do tell him he's going to die? He is going to die. And I will break the news to all of you right now here at the chapel. You are all going to die. Get used to the idea. You don't need to get used to the idea because your body will stink just the same. You don't need to believe in the idea. You're going to die. You will all die. And I will die. We will all die. But what will our face be like? What would our body be like three days after our death? There is one man that died, and only one, who died and faced death and destroyed it. He died and faced death and wiped it out. And that man is our Lord Jesus Christ, and his faith was most beautiful when it was dead. When we go into eternity, the friends of God, with sanctifying grace inside of our souls, with the true faith of his holy church inside of our minds, with the true love inside of our hearts, we will be allowed to gaze upon that same face, only it will be alive. A type of this face is the face of Moses, Moses once stood in the presence of God and he stood in front of a burning bush and he saw the face of God and his the reflection of the face of God upon the face of Moses caused his face to shine with a bright light so that that day forward no man could look straight in the face of Moses they would be blinded by the light coming from the face of Moses. Therefore, the Jewish people requested Moses that when he would stand before them, he would wear a big hat over his head made of bearskins, and he would cover his face, and the light still shone through the face, through the mask. They could not look upon the face of Moses, which was the reflection of the face of God. God loves the face. 
He loves it very much. It is a reflection of his own image and likeness. He is not a minor thing that in the world today, with this coronavirus evil, not just stupidity, but evil, they are saying, you must cover your face. That most special part of you made by God to reflect his goodness, to reflect his beauty, to reflect everything wonderful about God. You know, when, you, when, when detectives study murder cases, a serial killer just kills someone that they kill. They might even skin them or eat them, but they just kill them. However, whenever there is damage to the face, when there is damage to the face, the detectives all know that the one who did the murder was the husband or the wife, the friend, the one that knew the person personally and not only wanted to kill him, but he hated him. And with his personal hatred, and with hatred, you always go to the face. Hatred makes one always attack the face. It is not a small thing. The devil is nearing the end of his reign. He is about to be crushed by the Blessed Virgin Mary. And he hates the face of man. He hates it. Therefore, it is the demonic and satanic rule that is made around us that says, you must cover your face for safety. Cover the identification. Cover your uniqueness. Cover your beauty. Cover the representation of God. Because it's the only way to be safe. It is not the only way to be safe. And furthermore, what is so bad about death? All of us are going to die. Some will die healthy. Others will die sick. Some will die old. And some will die young. We we'll all will die. We must all face the reality of death, which is the cause by the sin of Adam. But how are we going to face death? We face it with Jesus Christ, and we face it with his holy cross, and we face it with his divine truth. It isn't so bad a thing to die. If we live in grace, it is always a good day to die. We are martyred for our holy faith. It's a beautiful day to die. We die young or we die old. We die the friend of God. We die with the love of God in our hearts. It's a beautiful day to die. Who are those that are so afraid of death Rich men always join gyms. The difference between a rich man and a poor man, a rich man joins a gym and he actually uses the machines. The poor man joins a gym and he just pays his 25 bucks a month and never shows up because he's too busy, too busy eating uh, supersized fries and exercise coat. But the rich man, he joins a gym and he exercises every day because he wants to have health in his old age while he's spending his money. He wants to hold on as long as possible before he dies. But he still dies. And everything he has is taken from him. And nothing goes with him into eternity. Except what is in his heart. Our Lord Jesus Christ said. It is easier for the camel. To pass through the eye of an eagle. Which is a very very small gate in Jerusalem. Than it is for a rich man. To be saved. Rich men want to stay away from death. They are afraid of death. Because they know that when they go to death, they will experience what Divas experienced when he died. Divas tried to live a healthy life. Divas even had good insurance by going to church. But Divas did not take care of the poor man Lazarus outside of his gate. He did not feed him. He did not clothe him. He did not take care of him. And so what happened? Divas died and was buried in hell. On the same day, Lazarus, the poor man, died, and he was taken up into the bosom of Abraham. Such a happy day for Divas, for, for Lazarus. Such a miserable day for Divas. In our world today, too many people are too afraid of death. Why is this? Because they're living in mortal sin. Because they're living in the enemies of God. They're living without divine grace. They're living without divine truth, and they're not interested in divine grace, and they're not interested in divine truth, so therefore they're interested in health. 
You've got to wear your mask. You've got to stay six feet distance. Don't worry about social distancing. The farthest place you can get away from God is called hell. And it's in the center of the earth. And you will be completely alone in hell. They'll be totally distanced, all one from another. Each man completely alone. Crushed together and yet completely alone. Completely abandoned. In perfect social distance. Whereas in the kingdom of heaven, we shall all be together, united in one family. What is the cause of the wickedness of the coronavirus? What is the cause of the wickedness of our world today? It is simply the abandonment of the true faith of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Roman Catholic Church. That's all it is. And by looking at death in the wrong way, we're afraid of the wrong kind of death. We're afraid of the death of the body that decays. And yet we watch our body decay every day. Take a look in the mirror. Get some more oil of Olay. It doesn't really work. You're still dying. You're still dying. And you can see it happen every day. Let us not be too terrified of such a death. But rather, let us be afraid of the second death which is the death of sin and the death of the loss of faith. This is the death that we must be afraid of and the death we must avoid at all costs. And whoever dies without the second death, who only dies the first death, will read about it and sing about it in the Requiem Mass, at the pre preface of the Mass. Vita mutatur non tolitur. The life is changed, not taken away. Life is changed, not taken away. Vita mutatur non tolitur. The light has changed, not taken away. In any case, we must remember that we're here to prepare for a holy death and all other deaths. There's only a holy death of God and unholy death of Satan. And whichever one rules our hearts today, this is the one we meet. Therefore, let us live our lives that Christ is always in my heart and Christ is always in my soul, and I don't want to live a bitter life. Mele res mors quam vita amara, says the sacred scripture. Death is better than a bitter life. Today people live in a bitter life. They're so terrified. They don't want to die. So they're all staying in their houses. They're not living. They're wearing masks. They're afraid of the sickness. They're afraid of invisible sickness. They're afraid of anything that can happen to them. They're terrified to live. But it doesn't stop them from dying. We must not be terrified to live. There is, we must live a happy life. We must live a life in peace with God inside of our hearts. And we must not be afraid too much of all these material things. We're all going to die anyway. What matters is how we die. What matters is how we live. What matters is the state of our soul, the state of our minds and hearts at the time of that death. And if the death comes today, fine. If it comes tomorrow, fine. If it comes in 50 years, fine. Doesn't matter when it comes, so long as every day I know, love, and serve God in this world so that I might be happy with Him in the next. Let's live life that way, and death will not be such a terrible thing. So let us you all, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.